going to be important. Yes, Astralis' chances of getting to the top six are rather absurd. Step one would be winning every single game that they continue to play. And that's, of course, not the easiest of steps to take, but they can start hit here versus G2. Now, keep your eyes on G2 as well. 10 to 12. Yep, so Astralis have to play... Uh, who do they play in the final game? I just had it out with literally one second ago. Well, I mean, it was more like five, so actually not five literally. Games. What? Five Australia's seconds. have to play G2 obviously now, and then Mouse Sport. So they have a rough finish to the season, and G2 on the other hand, they also have a rough end. They have to play Australis now, and then their last match will be against VP. So those four wins would put them at 15. Now consider this, they also have to rely on Envy yep. losing games. They have to lose every single game. Yep. Navi, or they can lose, I think Envy can win one. Navi have to lose like the majority of their games as well. Yep. And Virtus Pro have to have a really bad end of the season. Okay. All, all which is, is somewhat possible considering the runs that these teams have. I think NIP has quite an easy run yes, to the end do, of the season. Yeah. Fnatic has an easy run to the end of the season. Dig have to play G2? No, Dig have to play Envy, so that'll be an interesting match. There's so many good games still to come. It's crazy. Lots to look forward to. And I know that, I mean, at this point in time, there's so much question marks surrounding Astralis. Like, what is, the, like, I'm pretty sure I was having a quick look. I was, like, intrigued by this player's name. I was like, okay, let's have a look at Notan Wandig. You click him. Just a big Wandig. I think he has tw tw 26 kills on HLTV. And he played 40, one game. 40 deaths, so his stats are worse than mine. Hang on, wait, uh, match history. It's hard to do. Get so he has played, oh, this is crazy. He has played two games in competitive environment recorded by HLTV. And that's yeah. what I'm looking at here. And neither has been particularly outstanding. I mean, and he's got, what, let me have a look, 26 kills across two games, playing for Geek Unit and KON Denmark, both losses. Yeah, that's... It's, that's, that's a crazy pickup. I think what this this matchup is going to be going to be seeing with Astralis, we talked about it a lot, but it's the deep-seated doubt that this team has in constantly getting to a position of maybe semi-finals, quarter-finals, whatever, and choking and losing. Or not even choking, just losing, right? Yeah. And that doubt just slowly, it's slowly you start to resent the leadership or like different pl parts of the team and you're always going to blame somebody you can only lose so many times kirby made a tweet like about losing and you know eventually it's going to actually affect you that you're not learning from the losses yeah. anymore and that's true i think um once it gets to that point where you you just you can't stand it and you don't feel like you can win and you have no confidence in your leader or, or in the system it's or you're running or anything, you have to you have to change it and this change could be a good mental switch i i don't expect a lot from australis because this to me picking up this player means that the their, their choices are very limited right they can't pick a player in another top danish sure. team because of roster you know stuff and, and, and contracts and all that kind of jazz and I don't think um, they can take people from Premier either. I'm not 100% no. yeah, certain. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very intriguing discussion yeah. to have. I think we'll actually continue it after the game does go down. Because you two are chomping at the bit to go ahead and bite into the Danes. Maybe it'll be a great Dane. We'll see as it's time to go ahead and jump into our first iteration of Dust2. We've got two to look forward to. Over to your casters now, Henry G and Seda Kist. Wouldn't it be better if we played Dust1 and then Dust2? That's what I was thinking. And then, like, counted it up? No. Nah. It's going to be Dusty's yeah. one, so. I, uh, yeah, like, uh, I'm, like, bundled up in my winter sweater because, like, Alex, I'm also getting sick. My body doesn't even know how to get sick. It's so tired. I, so I'm this is going to be, like, a prolonged thing. I'm not thing. sick physically. I'm just sick mentally. Like, yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty checked out at this point. But I'm still ready for this game. It should be very good. We get to see Mr. Notan Wandig, Matt. I know someone you're a big fan of. We'll it is, see. yeah. This was uh, this was my, my idea to bring yeah. you to the <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what he can do here. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> he's done. He is Excuse done. Me. I'm no, sat down for two seconds. He's already contagious. No, it, to, or, uh, it's all to good. Me. It's all good. Um, so I think G2 should run away with this one. I don't even know who's calling for it now. I assume it's Zonic at this point. Obviously, Carrigan, the in-game leader, being benched at this point. I have no idea what's going to happen. Astralis, a very good Dusty 2 team overall. But let's see whether they can do anything about this. As we go into the first round, it's no Deagle. I was about to say, that's what Scream has been known for on Dusty 2 recently. They've been walking to be pretty much standard on their, their, their terrorist pistol. They're going to be aggressive the device. He gets taken down by Scream, though. We said they'd be favored going to this one, considering what's going on here. No time one day. No one's ever heard of him before. It's crazy to think he's to pick up here. But it's, well, it's temporary. Though, yeah, exactly. This is clearly a placeholder. The rumor is they want Glaive in place of Kerrigan, or at least that's what's flying around. We saw some tweets about it. We saw some Reddit Ooh, posts about it. Lovely shot. Off. All right. All right, no tan. Started off well, but it's, uh, yeah, very clearly just an asterisk beside his name until things settle. And, and if they can't gl get Glaive, maybe this motivates Kerrigan to come back. I'm not sure which is the uh, is the alternative. But Zipix inside of the site. He's going to get dropped by Scream at Goose. That's going to open us back to a four versus three now. As the pixel fall to Scream as well as he drops back down in towards CT. It's Notan that's been covering off long. And a good pick by Dupree to get a little bit aggressive from CT. But he's got to wait. Notan's got to be the one to find the information to hold off Scream and allow the rotations to come in. No contesting toward Catwalk right now from Astralis as well. A little bit of but that's all right. 
Because it is going to be Scream that's going to try and hold this off. And without contesting Catwalk, Bomb planted in that position. Two versus two and no kits. They've got to come up large. And RPK taking down Dupree. It's on to the young lad. 16 years old, standing in. He's got to try and make a play. Baits it out with the tap on the bomb. The time's gone. And RPK's got the headshot to boot. Well then, aggressive play from the CD dead towards Shorter's device to kick things off. Like I said, G2 have been known to just be walking to be with the Desert Eagle as well. Obviously, it's got to the point where we all know that's going to be a case, and this time they're doing more of a default at this point. They go towards long. Mr. One Day does find a kill, but unfortunately for him, G2 a little bit too strong. Pincering the A side, a short plunk comes in. The retake was decent, but a two versus one towards the end does fall in favor of the French. We're going to go to round number two. A scout purchased by device, not a full investment in terms of the force buy from the CDT. He's the only one really going for it, and he will actually be hunted towards middle. A Smith's waiting to be flashing towards long. There's Flash, and one player towards the fifth for CTs. Could be interesting. It's Mr. One Deeg, and he hits a PT50 headshot. Manages to stay alive as well with his team going. Oh, he does. He does go down, yes. I, my bad. It's, it, you are bad, but it's okay. It's okay. He's got two quick kills, at least in two rounds, so there's potential for the young man's aim. But it's Scream again, who's showing off his force to be reckoned with in terms of headshots. I think that's his third overall. G2 on Dust2 twice. Yeah, we say Astralis is good, but with a stand-in and you play this map twice, this is going to be one of the G2 hardest challenges. Certainly not in good form right now. They've uh, sure, fallen, but it's fallen still Dust2 on a stand-in. Exactly. On an online game as well, I think there's no real pressure for G2. Obviously, it's going to take closing sectors of Pro League, but in an online game with Dust2, you feel like the, the class from G2 will prevail, and it's going to be 2 0 here. One thing does get one kill. Not seeing get the one deagle yet. That's what I'm waiting for, Matt. I, I, it would be ironic if he just never used the deagle. Yeah, literally never used it. Yeah, it, it'd be better if he had the R8 equipped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't like, seen that in a while. There were a few guys actually uh, bringing that up. There now. was. Like, who was there? It was Snacks did it every now and then. There's someone from Hellraisers who was doing it. There's about two angles. I think it was Shower. Shower actually was buying it at one point. I can't remember. I, I yeah, wanna, I think it was. Yeah. Him. It was Flipside, he's of course. So yeah, I think it was Shower from Flipside who was doing that. But no one ever got to kill with it. No, there's only like two angles in the entire game I can yeah. think of it being relevant. One of them, oddly enough, is at this corner at long. Because if you pre bolt it and aim the doors, they're usually there at the same time. But again, G2 is going to start off well against, well, the full saving CT. His PT50 bought up for Dupree, but no armor, no investment in terms of utility because they want to get the guns out. And strong force they can. Smith's through the edge of the box, going to find the shot onto Dupree. But Smith is always on Dust2. I know he gets a lot of flack, but Dust2 is his playground. Well, good news for the CDs is they didn't fully invest in that second round, so they get a decent buy going forward here as well. Device with the AWP and armor, they got some nades to work with as well, a couple of kits. Didn't want to fully invest in that round, we'll make sure they actually have something to work with here on the first round. We said it was a bit of a question mark for the AWP of Astralis, it always has been, I think. And um, obviously, switch between Device and Carrigan. Looks like now it has to be Device. There's not really much of a choice. I'm not sure if One Deke is an AWPer. Uh, I would suspect that he's not. And we'll see what happens in the first round here. He'll be making his way towards Pit. Zipex backing him up. This is the first showing. This was announced today. It's kind of nuts. This is going down. Let's see whether he can hold his first frag, getting some attention from shocks out towards the pit area. Flash comes over. All just to foil the plans of Zipex, but no one's going to contest it. It's going to be onto Catwalk instead. Device. This is one of the other problems for Astralis that's easily identified by most pundits. Yourself, most of the other guys on the desk, there's a huge AWP problem. They used to be very dynamic with Cajun B on the team. Device, he'd pick it up on the T side AWP, but now they're lacking the consistency in AWP. So if they're going to switch out Kerrigan, that's fine, but they're still going to need Device to step it up on this weapon still. Zipex to go back to the pistol, has to hold off this angle as he's run out of ammo. So it was awkward for Body inside of the smoke, and as such, he does go down, but it shocks and Smith to follow it up, and a good shot from Scream again. As Zipex will get taken down on top of ramp. And no Tam was waiting it long. He anchor, anchors the position well for the retake, but now he's got to do it all by himself. One versus three. Quick tag onto Smiths. But he can't overcommit to the peak because as soon as he does, he'll be confronted by not one but two. Down towards DT and quad. Well then, G2, so far so good. First go around default to kick things off. We know they've got a very strong A execution as well. It did get a bit interesting there. Device fully flashed, comes back and finds one kill. Zipex finds one of the USP as well, but ultimately it's G2 getting the lion share of the frags and one DU is towards the pit, holding that area, trying to protect his teammates from that pincer, but left in a horrible position. Three versus one against G2. And we'll see what happens in round number five. They've got some Desert Eagles to work with, but it should be a 5-0. And then someone goes absolutely nuts. This time though, no time one DU has got a deagle. And he's dead now, of course. Well. Off or not. Device, though, speaking of Deagle. Nice shot onto Shocks. Kirby's here with him. Hasn't peaked yet either. Flames won't quite reach. Oh, him, but he's spotted over top of it. Try to get clever and allow them to walk further into the site, but unfortunately, for him at least, it's screamed to get the shot body to follow it up. Zipix down bomb going to be planted, and Device on an AWP is going to try and save. Now, they know this AWP is over toward the A site. 
Yeah, there was shocks by himself towards Long. Is that where the kill went down? I'm trying to find. Yeah, he was at the Long doors. He tried to face by himself and his hold for rotations. Obviously, when he's showing heavy presence towards B, any players in pit will rotate over. And we'll see where this all can survive at this point. Oh, did he mean to? And to go from I'm not sure, but it cost him. He does get body. But that's all. And RPK was 2 HP. It would have been nice for the reinvestment, but double AWP now for the T side. Yeah, maximum loss money for Astralis can really buy into this round 5-0. We did say they're going to struggle against a team like G2 on your maiden showing of this new lineup. I guess, look, it's not even a full lineup, right? This is just why they work out the plans going forward. I think that's a, a weird decision to bring in a completely unheard of player um, while you're trying to work things out. But I guess at this point, it's allowed Zonic to build the team he wants to. He doesn't have Carrigan trying to influence the game he wants it to be played, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's try and go with his new game plan with a new player who's going to listen and just do exactly what he's told. Well, this is the thing. They need a foundation to build upon Astralis. That's one thing they haven't been able to fall back on twice. Very aggressive. Does catch Smiths off. Watch the repeat potential from lower and Scream's not going to go. He doesn't know who else or what else is waiting on the inside of the mid-doors, and it's Kierby that is rotating back out from B that could have caught him off with that M4. So a very aggressive pick from Device early. We'll give them the man advantage to work with. Shock's going to walk out the AWP. Smoke already on CT side means he can focus toward B. Window and Kierby. Hold up, my friend. You don't have any information. Jump peak. He'll know they're there now, surely. As such, the flash comes out and he wants to reposition. But that AWP. Oh, God. Yeah, he definitely got back to position faster than he was expecting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, still a man advantage here for the CTs. It looks like it will be some sort of B play coming in eventually. RPK waiting in the tunnels. His teammates focusing towards mid. Still 50 seconds to work with as well. Shocks with the AWP this time. Uh, Smiths has fallen. They do like to walk in towards B. Contact play is definitely something that they're known for. But Dupree in a decent position for defense, and KRB will be baiting as well. So they've got a nice setup to lock it down at least to get the initial trades needed. Molotov, though, if they Molotov defense, that's a problem. Doesn't look like it'll be coming in. Shot from the body at Mindo and Getshaw Sipix in rotation. KRB does hold true. Dupree pops, but early enough, Shock's able to respond. Bomb down mouth of the tunnel. Yeah. A three versus two. Like you say, this is a full reset, or rather, excuse me, loss bonus in favor of a straw list. Took his teammate there. Shocks will get him. So I was gonna say they need to keep all three alive. They go down to two in the end, but they just get to the AWP. So all well, they didn't I like to pick it up. It was actually a device that ran over to it, so he couldn't pick it up. He already had Here the other one. Yeah, right. I was thinking if they'd at least get the economy in that sense. But again, we talked about this. They don't really have a consistent first stopper. Kerrigan's normally your second. Who's gonna use it? The problem is, yes, they win the round, but this is a scary position to be in now. You can see Body, he's really in quite nicely. He had the money to get the AKL, but he's kind of predicting the win up head up, and it's not the case. Dupree's the only player about it. So he gets a MAC-10, and it will be just a straight-up B rush here by the looks of things. RPK leading the charge. Decent flashbangs as well, but it's Dupree to find the first kill, but that MAC-10 comes up trumps, and it's going to be Body finding a return. Kiabi, though, still fighting back. They haven't got control of the B side, but they have got the advantage in terms of the manpower. Scream's going to go for the plant. See the site. Four versus three. They have a man advantage still to work with, though. Shot up. That needs to hit. Device missing Smiths with the Molotov in, and everything was perfect for him, and he still couldn't land it. Big problem. They hit that. They take it down to a four versus two. They can charge in the site with manpower, but now it's going to be No Tan that's got to try and find a shot toward range with the UMP. He can't hold it off. Kirby at least does get body trading him as he gets through the door to get aggressive. That's going to leave Smith in the open. But Scream's still in this. He's going to try and pull this back all on his own. One versus two. Low HP. Bomb plan the default. He's going to try and get through this hook, but he caught out. Nearly gets the shot regardless on a device. Got and have they got time? Yeah. Got up. All right, Henry. I'll believe you. I'm always right, Matt. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was very close, yeah. It was touch and go, especially if it was planted as well. Not in the default position. Um, that was about maybe a quarter of a second remaining, but I was always confident. I was always going to be fine. Um, still, they're, they're grinding down the city economy. Still going to be reinvesting to this. It's going to be G2 with an AWP themselves, four AKs. And yeah, a touch and go round there with G2. Opting for that initial rush, but like I said, Astralis getting that initial trade and the man advantage in their favor was difficult definitely wasn't clean cut but they managed to win the round it's gonna be 5-2 here still in danger of getting reset and if they have to fully invest back into the round it's gonna be 5-2 here and damage done towards shocks once again trying to work towards long but getting their HEs towards face and now CTs with device towards short this time kind of changing things up it's what he's known for in dust 2 especially having that aggressive dynamic play device getting ready to hold off top middle as well on a peak Let's wait for the smoke, Ooh. though, and inside of the smoke, Scream comes through, device goes down. He does that nice little jump on the corner of the Xbox there and just gets through the smoke, didn't see it coming. Nice way to open things up. It's a big snow sitting passive on the ramp as well. He's going to try and pull him back down with him. Both going to play from the ramp, so double beat potential, but they've got to be swift on it. He misses the first shot, no tan. Immediately goes down to Scream. Molotov for Zipix to try and get through, but he's burning alive. He only manages one. 
Still, though, they managed to trade it equal. We'll give up the A-Site in doing so. Bomb to be planted safely for body. It does go corner so it can be covered from Cat. But more importantly, also seen from Long. They don't like to go that direction. And they're going to split the CTs. This kill decides it, raise it. Oh, e that that's it, yeah. Especially going towards CT. Kirby doesn't have an angle to walk out from. They'll look toward Cat first off, but yeah, he's going to wait for exits. And that smart body. He'll have to cross this because he'll anticipate toward Cat potentially. But even then, Kirby, he doesn't even look like he wants to sit around and wait for the angle. Indeed. Well, yeah, like I said, Dupree, the only player can make something happen there with his teammate in CT spawn, and he gets shut down by the Shocks AWP, and it's another default coming in from G2, that nice little jump from Shocks, uh, from Scream, sorry, towards the Xbox, finds the aggressive wave from device, the round falls apart, Zipex doing what he can, it was an equal exchange when the bomb was down, they had so much time to work with, a nice plan, Smoke's being dropped towards short as well, they had to fall back, readjust, uh, readjust themselves, and Kiabi won't be able to win the round this time. That is the reset now for the CTs. Yes, he saves an AK. Um, oh, was that? Okay, yeah, so he saved the AK, but they are going to force into this one. He drops a Famous over. Dupree buys a UMP. Now two of them as Zipex gets one as well. I think one dig sticking to the name map, of course. He only has the D rule, but we know that's fine for him. He's confident. That so confident he's called his name one dig. One dig. We'll see if it works. Flashes off toward Long. He doesn't even get to the corner to peak doors, so RPK. Freedom of passage toward the dumpster. Nice dumpster trying. Yeah, that's not going to work without a flash. Hold that right side wall toward the stairs. It is going to be no tan with one on the deagle. It was a one deagle as well, but then he missed all the rest. So, unfortunately, gone he goes. It shall be 6-2. to two. Make it 7-2, to two, potentially. Yeah, it will be. Kirby's gone. Yeah, and they're going to have to be almost certainly for the next round. Kirby trying to save the AK now. A nice little fast A attack there. Smokes towards mid, getting up towards short fast as well. They know they've got a huge advantage in terms of the money. Hitting the shots required, shocks and body. Body, a player that definitely has to be given credit recently. And in terms of where the team has been slacking, he's been certainly filling his role very nicely. And the games they have been winning have been very influential indeed. It will be Kirby saving towards T spawn now at the Terrace and definitely justify the hunt. You can see two coming from spawn as well and two pressing towards B. So he'll probably be going down at this point. This flashman will give his position away at this point. Find anything from this, they know where he is, and they've got time to find him. Time, but still can't land the shots. The deathmatch angle, body's gonna take Kirby down. You play Frag Shack, you always spawn in that corner. Yeah, from the spawn protection. The, the no battle. spawn protection in Frag Shack. No, good. I like hate Brutal. It. I hate no, it. but it's it, the worst spot to spawn is when you're by, beside the stairs on Catwalk because all you have to yeah. do to trigger the spawn is walk up to the third step. So people just walk up, turn and kill you, walk up, turn and kill you, walk up. <laughs> it's like, come on. Well, for Lika now for Astralis, this is a, a certain round for G2 and the device getting attacked from the door. That certainly doesn't help. They haven't invested a single penny into this one. And another shot as KRB fills a bullet through the door as well. And will be shocks now with the Mac 10, trying to farm some cash here with the SMG. Nice little flash there. I like that a lot. And you can see two natural CTs. He's got himself in a bit of trouble. He's been struggling towards long, to be fair. Taking damage now. This could be a bit tricky for him. Three players towards and challenging him. Shot from body outdoor. Just carry on the scaffolding. Hello. Dupree, though. Getting one shot back. He's going to try and pop out now to give Device a chance. He's yet to go down. They know where he is behind the box. 40 HP, no armor. And RPK will quickly assassinate him as he's walked in from. Get out of the way. From the tunnels. Well, there it is. Astralis there with the full eco. Got two kills out of it, to be fair. That's probably about as good as it's ever going to get. So, not too bad. There'll be a third stage loss bonus next round. So, $2,400. They've got about an average of $2,200. So, yeah, their buy will be coming in. There might be a potential for robbing. Dupree's got $2,750. Yeah, so they can, they can get an orb. It won't be the best buy overall, I think. With device, you probably want to get that in, though. See what you can do with it. Maybe allow him to go towards B, hold it by himself. We'll see what they decide to do. The money does come in. And like I said, Dupree, the only one who can drop over an orb. Mm, will he do it, though? Yep, there it is. The Dupree throwing that over to device. Like I said, I think the best bet here, play, send it towards back, back of B, let him play there by himself, have a focus towards A, take a bit of a gamble. We'll see what they decide to do here. Put on the spawn as well, device could go towards long. We'll see what the ops to do. He's going to run over 11, GT's time to run away with this a bit now. Speaking of ops to do, the to-do list for Smith is to take down anyone going B. For some reason, I thought he was going to pull the trigger there. X-Ray is so misleading. Shocks does get forced in by this Molotov lineup exists, though. It's going to be no Tam with the kill instead. It's a little bit over-aggressive and zealous yeah. from Shocks to it's go all by himself. He's been doing that a few times this game. No need to do that whatsoever. It's such a high-risk maneuver. If you go down, the he rounds... He to challenge the young buck. He does. He may be sending out a message trying to wreck his confidence, you know? Well, Device. It's out of the middle with the AWP. You're right, though. Shocks has gotten aggressive there a few times. Yeah. If he, had, like, he obviously gets flashed in the start, but then he's refacing. 
And you can see body now trying to find the fragment turn. He knows one deep low. He receives a headshot for his wow. trouble, so he does find the kill. Good swift reaction at least, but it's gonna be an AWP. We'll make a difference about that HP. Oh, so unlucky. Yep, the timing's so off. Shot selection doesn't work out for device four HP through the box. Scream's gonna take advantage round gone. This is gonna be a hard ask, and yeah, they're already saving, I believe. Kirby could rotate over. 53 seconds left to work with, but he's in T-spawn and that far away from it. As soon as Bomb goes down, yeah, Dupree holding up. They're just going to look for the exit kills where available. Starting off, well, no tan shocks. Pretty much gave himself away to him, but unfortunately, and then the dink as well, unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize further. Well, two weapons being saved here for Astralis. Quite a simple approach from G2 once again. They know they've got such an advantage. The setup's not going to be perfect for Astralis. I'm not sure how much time they've had to practice. I would say none at all. These guys, Astralis, come straight from Ukraine, had a horrible tournament there, didn't make the final eight, which is the only real objective there. We kind of discussed this quite a lot there. It was a weird tournament in that sense. If you got top eight, that's all you really wanted to do was a qualifier for the finals in December. Um, Astralis not doing that. That's what kind of initiated this change. I think if they got top eight, they probably would have stopped it out to all that event and see what happened at that point, but they didn't do it once again. Well, that's the thing though. The schedule is so busy that you stick it out to top eight at this event, then you're in the E-League. Did he just spray to give himself away? The thing is, though, they're going to E-League, right, but this guy's only 16. He can't even go to E-League with them. Yeah, that's true. So... Well, no, I, and that's... Again, he's a placeholder. Yeah. I'm not looking at Notan to be yeah, yeah, yeah. anything on this roster. He's definitely a placeholder in this sense. Again, whether they want to try something new, bring Kerrigan back if they can't get Glaive that's or... that, Even if he's a placeholder, right? Like, even if he's someone that he comes in and like, he performs amazingly, he can't get Glaive in time, surely once someone is even eligible for the league. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? yep. That's, that's, that's why I find it a bit strange. But, you know, like you said, it's obviously a place order where they're working things out. But Shocks gifted a chance. Hey, Shocks isn't really firing all centers tonight, it seems. Like, those are the shots we expect him to know. Like, God Shoxy, Shoxy Jesus, whatever you want to call him, normally would be wrecking those opportunities. But it seems a little bit poor today. But Kiabi, he's firing back. They have got two M4s to work with there. It's going to be in the hands of Dupree as well, as he's working towards the CT spawn area with his teammate. They're doing a lot of damage, but only finding one kill so far and another close exchange and a little bit of lag. But we're fine. We're back. It's okay. Lag's not a big deal. No, we can handle lag. But if the server gets arm, that's when we got a problem. Yeah. Dad jokes are the best jokes. Kirby, gonna take down RPK. Well, place just three. Like Still favor of Astralis. I like when I met your dad. He's actually doing the classic dad jokes. Oh, no, he is. Yeah, he's he's, he's master. brutal, man. It's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Dinner table talk is like, God, yeah, yeah, you can see where I get it. Yeah. Smith's. Can't wait to walk back out. It could be a crosshair placement perfectly for that AWP, but they still need to go across with Bomb. Double Smoke to do so. Flash as well. Spray to come through. It's Notan that's got prime position to try and shut this down. Waiting behind go. the box. Deagle up. And it's not the one dig we were looking for. Shock's going to get... Oh, it's Smith's on Dupree. A four versus three down to a three versus two in the post plant. Kirby smoked off. Can only go so far. Wide boost to try and see above onto the site. And Shock's is waiting for that. It's gone again for Astralis. Just device now. He picks up an M4, but retreating. Shoxy looking to improve on the form we've seen so far. Managed to get the last two kills there. 10 2. I'm not sure how much Astralis invested into that round. I think they saved a rifle and maybe had enough to force one in. Maybe they saved two. I can't really remember. I'm tired, Matt. Um, it's going to be round number 13. They do have money to buy into this one. Still, Maximum Loss Manage comes in once again after finding the two rounds there in the mid stage. They have been having a very tough trek here. It's Dust 2 twice, remember, as well. So he's, we're going to learn a lot from the first showing. Still a chance to learn and fall back and, you know. Maybe have another go at it. That's fine. I still could get 1-1 one, one here. I still get 2-0, two, two no, to be fair. Or maybe I'm going to ahead of myself. Interesting that Smith says the uh, ESL Pro League. Usually that badge is applied because I think this, they're done through the client. That badge is applied when someone's not actually part of the roster. Reddit detectives. Be like. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I was going to, actually. <laughs> Hence why Notan has it, by, by way of example. Exactly. Well then, we get into another default here. No real fast play here, but you can see the G2 have got control of shorts as well. We've always talked about how deadly they are in the executions of the device, not catching the player jumping down to spawn. They actually has no idea that's happened. So that information hasn't been given to his teammates. At this point, Body said, right, I've got an absolutely amazing position here, but it doesn't matter. Device finding a frag towards long. Still doesn't know the players in CD spawn. This could still unravel for them. This is good. They're going to do a B split with Body in this position. Yep. He can completely shut them down here. Yeah. Yep, that's so big. All he does is just sit and wait, and anyone that dare walk by... G2's got somewhere. Again, they're a man down. Every time they've been a man down, they've had map control to work with. So Astralis, we said, oh, they're in a good position. They're really not. Same as last round. As soon as they smoked across and got in the site, they had no one to cover it off. G2 were hoping that that would beat out a player towards CD spawn. They weren't even committing at that point. They were hoping someone was just walking to his cross. They'd give them the man advantage back. 
well, or equalize it. Let's see, here we go. Trying once again. That's a really poor spin towards CD Spawn. Device can actually do a lot with that. And as he does spot Smith, pulls the nade out the wrong time. Exactly that. Kiri's able to fall back down inside the window because the Molotov was up, so no off shot into him. Nearly misses out. Goes to the reload, oddly enough, because the AK fell immediately onto him. Could have swapped it over fast. And it's going to be RBK to capitalize with two kills, in fact, both of them through the boxes. So Bomb gets planted. Body. He sends Perished, but it leaves Zipix to try and walk in through the tunnels. RPK is going to cover off door slash window, depending on how No Tam wants to go in. AWP tags up, oddly enough, but doesn't get the kill. It's RPK that does. Looks like it was dead on. And No Tam can do nothing as he gets inside the site. 10 to 2 as G2 just commanding it. Again, yeah. they go from a man down to a winning situation. At this point, Astralis is so deep into this game. It's 11 2. The money's not really there, but they need to get more rounds than this. They're going to have to force, unfortunately for them, four Famuses, no kits, only two smokes, one M4. Someone needs to be pushing up a B. Oh, the auto sniper's out. Does damage, doesn't find a kill, though. That's sending out a lot of messes, though. Smith's, he hasn't been fragging amazing. He's on four for five, but his teammates are doing all the work here, and it's 11 2. Can't really argue with anything here. And RPK trying to take advantage of potentially low HP players here, but it's 1D. Once again, Shock's by himself at the long doors. How many times is he going to die? In that scenario, they'll still probably win the round considering the circumstance, but still, you feel like he's almost gifting a kill at the start of each round, giving them a little bit of a handicap advantage. Body. He's going to try and walk back out. It's no tend to change his angle. He's been playing pit so consistently, and Body's never going to know it. Oh my, that's a little bit of nerve for the young guy. That'll get on to him. I missed that. How bad was that? It was pretty bad. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Okay, I was looking at the other screen. He had it dead to rights. It looked like he was going to go trigger discipline, and then he elected to shoot. Famas went a little everywhere, <laughs> as 16-year-olds tend to do. And <laughs> unfortunately, that the thing is, if it's you know an experienced player, they'll brush that off and say, okay, bad luck. But he's, you know, he's got to be nervous coming into Astralis, especially as a Danish player, you know, not really top tier or on a top tier Danish team. It's a chance for him to prove himself, whether or not he knows he's on the roster full time, or he's just a stand-in as we expect he is. Oh, body makes some footstep there. That was a chance to actually get the drop on Exit Hex there, but now he has to fall back. Missing the jump and divides. This kill's crucial. Can't pull the trigger just right. And body surely is killing himself there at that point. Yeah, he goes down. Still, though, a heavy advantage I'd give to GTA. No kits, only one Molotov to play with in the open hands of Smiths. Oh, and another miss smoke here. This is the round of whiffs, it seems. Yep. But yeah, that'll get on his nerves a little bit. Smith's waiting, trying to hit the shot inside the Molotov. Finally, it works his device on the rifle this time. Remember, he missed that off shot early on. We got around here. And RPK tries to bait back in toward that player fading away. He's still got it. You say he's got around. And RPK oh finds them both. <sighs> this is bad to worse for yep, Astralis. That should have been the round at that point with the missed smoke and then not finding that kill by the doors. I thought that was it. Round over. Astralis have arrived at the Favises. But unfortunately, 12-2 comes in. I, I really did think that was a chance there, especially when Body messed up the drop. Well, last round comes in. Once again, have to buy three Famuses and MP7. And an M4 for Kyabi. The auto stuff is back out. It's going to be three making four sniper rifles kick things off. Not much damage inflicted, though. And uh, they may go towards B again, thinking they've done more damage than they actually have. But it's shocks, though. Does he want to die once more? Let's find out. Yes, he does. That time he hits it. MP7. Every time it feels like Chox is down there, but you know, still fine. It's 12 2. Can't really read too much into it, I guess. Well, scream. Double set of door here. Could bait in for device. If they're going to go Xbox. Spot shadow on the wall or just the knee coming forward? I don't think there's enough of a shadow. It's a soft shadow there. So, scream. Gets the kill. Able to jump back up. Now start to get in toward the A site. Forward stance right now. I'm not sure who's up leading the way. Oh, well, there we see it now. We switch angles. It's body. It is body. There's now a body got, up there leading the way. They've got enough to actually execute on the side. And the smoke comes, initial smoke comes in. Zipex flashed off his cool. He's by the barrels. Dead now. There's literally nothing you can really do. You've got no nades. You've got nothing really to work. You need to find a kill. Getting flashed to hell. One dig there. Have a chance to find a kill, but can't actually get it as he's fully flashed as well. Could get his kill on screen, though. Could get a chance to get into it. That was a good shot from No 10. He's giving them a chance. Body's gonna go for the plant, which means he just has to isolate Scream. He's trying to hit the shot. Tap, trigger discipline, but fades away. His smoke dissipating a bomb plant, and it's gonna be device to come in on top of it. It works because he finds Body. There we go. And Dupree gets Smith's. Yay! Celebrate. All of them do a dance. Well, there it is. Shock's giving his frag off a free once again. Finally, they're punished for it. It was a weak buy from Astralis, but they managed to get 12 3. Difficult to really read too much of this. Obviously, the. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sick of it, I think. Um, Obviously, Dude, the first I, showing I from 1D. Sick. Don't worry, it's fine. The, the first showing from 1D, it's obvious that they're having a bit of trouble here. All the clutches they should be winning falling away for them. You're just calling him 1D straight up. 
Well, one tan, one dig is a bit of a. What do you want to call them? No tan? Or I call them no tan. I like one dig. I think that's I like no tan because cool it reminds here. me of Freakazoid. It was 12 3. G2 probably going to win his first one. We do have two showings of Dust 2 here. So hopefully it gets better and better as we go on. So we all, we'll take a quick break right now, but don't go anywhere. We want to see if this could improve. What? We knew it was going to be a rough night for Astralis. Yeah. Benching Kerrigan. Zonic apparently the one to make the call. And they bring in a young buck that no one knows anything about. So. And they're true. playing G2 twice on Dust 2, which is a hard match to play them <laughs> even when you have your full roster. Pretty horrible recipe altogether, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But 12-3, it's Pro League, Matt. And you know what that means. Yeah, it's going to end 16-14 in favor of Astralis. No, probably G2. That's what normally happens. Like they come back, come back for so long. And we've seen it. some wins. Okay, we've seen it both ways. You're right. Yeah, it normally, it normally ends up that the team's got a huge lead. They lose a pistol. And as far as we get right back into it, make it a decent game, but overall, it will be G2 winning. I, I, I wouldn't mind that happens. I want to see more from the, the new guys, see what he brings to the table here. But the pistol is definitely required as we go into the CT side here. We have to say that G2 normally do struggle on their CT sides overall. That's uh, a bit of a common trend, it seems, these days. As we get into it now, we'll have a look at the buy for the T's. It's going to be three sets of armor for them. And uh, there he is. No town one dig. He brings in with the same buy. Just Kiabi with the deagle. So wants to play from G2 there. Three towards A, pretty default for now. No one really giving me anything to work with to start. It'll be default from both sides. Scream. Do you know that Scream is Moses' favorite player? Is he really? Yeah, it has Cream in the name. Ah, of course. Scream headshot placement was potentially there, but doesn't land. The shot fall, falls back as well. Shox is pushed up, so they could support off each other, but it's awkward angles to try and hold if anyone gets toward the top. Man, and a brawl ensues. Rotation back. Well, looks like they'll be going for a long take here. Quite a common strategy these days. Normally done a little bit faster. Smith's in RPK. They had to lock it down. It's a headshot received by RPK. But at this point, you might as well commit. Shox chimes in. It's going to be a five on two. Just one D and device remaining. And Scream, he's towards up the middle. Trying to lock them in as well. But they have done a ton of damage here. Might not be completely game over. Let's head towards the T-spawn. Device trying to find these OHP players. He goes aggressive here. But now in a horrible position. The Glock versus USB at that range. Oh, apparently, the, D the Glock is better, you know? It's fine. Glock is absolutely better. The nade's the best, though. 
That is the best. That is absolutely. It's going to be No Tan, the last alive this time. Scream and RPK extremely low. Chance to try and get two kills quickly from them. Wants the USB instead to do so. Can't blame him. Now he's got the range game advantage and Scream on top of the site. Immediate headshot. Wouldn't have mattered. Drops down as well. He wants to get aggressive. Has the bomb, but just checks to see if anyone's close by. Quick peek at long. They are rotating onto Cat, though. Three of them there. So as soon as he gets on 18 seconds, he's going to hold this, and they're going to get wide on toward Gandalf. RPK just nails him. Well, he gets a bomb down. He finds a kill as well. So pretty much the only thing that could have worked out for him there. He wasn't going to win the run in that scenario, one versus four, but... That's probably about as good as it's going to get. So not too bad at all. So there it is. They didn't win the pistol, but still, they could buy up into the second round. We saw Mouse Sports do it before on train. They got kills to work with. So they could buy two AKs if they were going to do it. So they are going to be forcing it. At this stage, probably one, two. One AK comes out. If he dropped it towards Device, it was one dig giving it to uh, the headline act of Astralis out. 13-3, they need this ready. You can see not a single rifle purchased for G2. Okay, there's one, and M4 towards the end. Three UMPs, though. There's a chance that Astralis can do something with this round. It's Kiabi actually finishing off the AK. And uh, we'll be working towards long to kick things off here, but smoked out Molosov. And Shock's getting quite aggressive here. He's struggling towards long, though. Maybe Kiabi can find his first kill, which he does. Mm, two lovely shots from him on that AK-47. The AK gone, it's gonna be re-grabbed by Zipex. They're gonna push in, and Zipex is like to keep the Tech 9 out for the sake of a duel. And Smiths is caught in a very awkward position with that scout. Yes, yeah, so they might have been still, but this round is gonna fall away from G2, it seems. And it was that one AK that finds the first two kills, and then Zipex, he gets two himself. There's one player remaining, and a headshot through the door. It's gonna be Dupree trying to finish things off with the Deagle, which he does. So here we go, then. We have something to talk about as Astralis do come back in the second. It's gonna be more and more common this second round force by. Normally, the CTs will be focusing more on SMGs and utility, trying to hold off and wait for the third, third round to come in. But if you can surprise them, have one of your star players pick up that AK, and use a decent spawn and try and find that first pick can be the way to get back into these sort of situations. So, and there's going to be a force buy, which is interesting for GT. Don't really need to do that, considering they know up against the AKs now. Long take coming in from Astralis. Should be quite an easy procedure for them. Decent nade towards the corner as well. Decent nade indeed, but it's going to be the guns instead to come around and find kills. In fact, G2, two pistols, maybe a third runs out of ammo, Smiths. As he has no tent down very low, nade's going to get lobbed his direction, and it'll be Kirby to make up for lost ground, taking both Smiths and Shocks. And he'll be the first to pedal forward toward the... CT position, the CT crossover. Scream, he's waiting with the UMP. It's no smoke, though. It's just flashes. Nearly a lineup. Bomb's gonna get dropped. Low HP on no 10. He's gotta be careful not to re it out, and they're all low. It's gonna be body because of it with two <laughs> quick shots. These rounds are a little bit sloppy. It's a little bit messy, but G2 do come in towards the end. They're two versus one. Both players low HP, and body getting the spray down with the Deagle. It's gonna be 14-4. Obviously, a starters have to revest in this round. The money's not in a horrible position. They managed to get three AKs out, but the AWP is in the hand of Smiths. This could be the chance to close it out. They win this round. It's pretty much GG at that point. And it's going to be 14-4. And a player down suicide as well. Smiths does land the shot, but can't find the kill. Aggressive from the French here. Very aggressive scream. We get one onto Kierby Dupree, though. He's there. Astralis again putting up a fight dink from far. PK goes low. Everyone's back and forth in the entire day of the game. But it is going to be the young blood up against three. He's got an AK to grab. Yeah, so CT's hyper aggressive this round. Uh, equal exchanges to kick things off, but it is kept pushing towards mid. Relentless as RPK looking to potentially throw his kill away there. His mm -hmm. aim's not bad, you know. He's a young gun, isn't he? He's they, a young gun, but they, they didn't bring now. him in for no reason. I mean, obviously, but yeah. I'm just saying, no one has any expectations. Yeah. And uh, he's got worse stats than Chad, so I didn't expect anything <laughs> either. I don't know. I, I expected him to be like a, a good player in that sense. They'd be able to get some snappy shots in, look a bit hungry, trying to surprise some people, you know. It's difficult to perform at a, a crazy level when you're getting bashed 15-4. But yeah, I agree. He has shown some, some impressive flick shots and little shots here and there, but we'll see what happens. Last round potentially here. It's just pistols for Astralis, Tech Nines and Deagles. They have a few smokes to work with. Primarily focused towards the B tunnels. The bombs outside long though. How do they stay alive in this one? It's going to be a tall order, to say the least. Smoke thrown. MK at the ready for RPK. M4 for body. Map point. Or should we call it halftime point, Henry? I guess we should. It's halftime point. Two dust twos back to back, but they all count. In terms of the season, which we're getting closer to the end of two more nights. 
indeed. And then we know who's going to Brazil. I can tell you who's probably not. Body. He's going to take down Dupree. I didn't mean Body's probably not, by the way. RPK going to find Device and Shocks waiting toward Elevator. Going to jump back up toward the boxes and just wait for the smoke because he wants someone to drop down. They aren't electing to do so. They want to wrap, and it's going to be Smith with the first shot. Can't find the second as he backpedals. RPK tripped him up a little bit. Ended up going down himself, but it is Smith's to close it out. That's going to be the game. But we're just getting started on Dust2, Henry. We are just getting started here. It's two showings of Dust2. We did say G2 should be running away with this one, which they obviously do. It was 16-4, 16-5 in the end. And uh, yeah, no one really got going for Astralis there. We saw some interesting rounds on the first half there, but obviously it was on the back foot in terms of the economy. Shock's giving his kill away a lot of time, that long. Some chances to work with there, but very one-sided affair. Let's hope they can bounce back on the second showing of Dust2. Guys on the desk, what did you think?